Well, good day everyone and welcome to IR Photo Tours and today we are going to be talking about macro photography and what we use. we're going to do a, some macro photography from start to finish so here we are set up here you've got some lovely flowers here that the the bees the flies the hoverflies butterflies they all love and it's something you can do in your back garden in this time of lockdown that we have at the moment you can get your insect photography done quite nicely now we have bumblebees all over these flowers at the moment. I have a Canon M6 Mark II. I am actually filming on the Canon EOS R and I am using the Sigma 24 mm F1.4 for the lens, the Canon EOS, uh, the Canon M6 Mark II with the uh, EVF DC2, which is attached to it on the top. And we have coupled it with a mount adapter for the EOS M mount. And we have also on top of that, we have the Canon um, 100 millimeter old style gold ring macro lens. Now, if anyone knows about the uh, Canon macro lenses, um, especially the 100 mil, specifically the 100 mil, they'll know that this, this guy here is great value for money. You will get absolutely amazing shots with this lens as you will with the uh, the IS version, the, the red ringed version. I've had both, and in my complete honest opinion, I have not seen much difference, if any, between the quality of image between this and the red ringed version, uh, which costs a lot more than this. And it, this is an old, old lens, old macro lens, but I believe you can pick these up for about 350 quid. Um, so that's a bargain. For macro so we've got the canon uh, 100 millimeter macro lens on top on, on that which is the f2.8 non is okay and the settings i'm using are manual mode as usual and manual mode i'll be on 14 frames a second that's what this little kitty can do this little camera this m6 mark ii <laughs> i'm I'm overwhelmed, I'm, I'm gobsmacked at what it's capable of doing. It is amazing, I absolutely love it. So I'm on 14 frames a second. I'm actually on f2.8 because it doesn't matter because the idea behind what I'm doing here is the 14 frames a second, I want to get as many shots as I can burst off, uh, burst off the camera for a reason. And the reason being is I'm going to photo stack these later on. So the idea is what my technique is to get to get something on the flower here, anywhere around here, that's settled. And then what I'll do is basically photo stack it. What what I'm going to do is focus on the head and focus, hopefully focus on the eye. Now obviously it's very small, so there's there's not a lot of play room. So what you're going to do is focus on the eye, get close, and then shoot. And as you shoot, move in, move in slowly, very, very slowly, as I am here. And what you're going to do is you're going to end up focusing front to back. So, you know, we've got the shots here that we want. We've got the shots yesterday that we want. So now let's get back to the studio and let's get some, um, some uh, editing done and show you how I edit from start to finish from Lightroom to Photoshop and then from Photoshop back to Lightroom just to finish off touching up. So that's what we're gonna do now, guys. So see you soon. Right, here we are, back in the study and let's get cracking on with doing some editing. Um, this is the image of the hovering fly. Click on the, the last shot and then go to, go to the, the other side to 21 and click shift and then left mouse button down. 
and then what it does is highlight all the images, okay? So now it's highlighted all the images, so that's that done. What I will do is then probably not even bother tweaking any of these images as yet. What I've done here is I've done an auto sync for when I get back into Lightroom. And auto sync is something that you can, it will automatically sync all the images. And the way to do that is you click this little icon here, which looks like a half grad filter, and you click that and then, then it will go to auto sync. So for example, there you go. So at, at the moment, that is what you would see in Lightroom. And then you click this icon and it auto syncs. So everything that you do to this one, the, any of these images that are highlighted already, so they're all highlighted as you can see, and what you do is basically you can change exposure, and what that will do is it will, it will change the exposure on all 24 images as it's saying, exposure update, eight, updated for 24 images. So that's what it's done. So we don't want that, we want to go back to where it was because that was, that was fine where it was. So what we want to do now is go onto the, this image here, and now bearing in mind that all of them are highlighted still, so go onto this image here, right click, as simple as that, right click, and go to edit, and go to edit, and to open as layers in Photoshop, okay? Click that, and that will take a little bit of time. So while that's taking a bit of time, I'm just going to zip across to it straight away, just like this. So that's my first image, and that's this one here. So that's uh, 9,119. And when we go down, we have 9,142. So there's quite a few images in there. So what I'm going to do is um, hold shift key, hold that and highlight that. So that, that the top one, top image is already highlighted. So hold shift key in and then click, left click. And what you've done is highlighted the whole lot. Okay. So then we go up to image, sorry, edit, not image, edit. And what we do, we go to auto align layers. Now we know pretty much that these images are gonna need auto aligning. And you go onto auto, which is here, and then press okay, and you watch this. So it's nearly done, it takes a little while. It will take a little while, there's 28 images. So just gotta sit there and have a nice cup of coffee, I think. <laughs> There we go. Right, so that has photo stacked all the images, okay? So auto align will align every single image. Now bear in mind, when you're hand holding your camera and you're shooting, you will be moving. There's no question of it, you will be moving. Hence why you must auto align all the 28 images. As you can see, there's all the 28 images there, all, all stacked on top of each other and it's also aligning my little bee here. And this is another reason why I would not crop at all in Lightroom at the start, because this is what happens, okay? So now you can go ahead and crop if you wish to, but what I would suggest is as they're all highlighted and as we've done this, we can go straight on to edit, go to edit, go to auto blend layers, Go to Stack Images, Tick Seamless Tones and Colours, Tick Content Aware Fill Transparency Areas if you wish to, and should we? Depends on your image. So we're going to blend all these images together now. They're getting all blended. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but as we blend, we are literally seeing, I'm going to move that across, we are literally, literally seeing in front of our eyes everything coming to sharpness, everything coming into focus, I should say. So it'll take a long time. And as I say, there's the bar, it'll take a while. But everything comes into focus as we watch. So I'm gonna speed this up for you, okay? It is now 
process those images and it is looking rather, rather good actually. So what I want to do now is literally flatten it, flatten the image actually before I crop. You go to layers and flatten layers. And that will take some time to flatten those because there's a lot of them. So that's doing it relatively quickly. So there you go. So they're all flattened. Okay, so that is one flattened image. Now what we're going to do is go to go to crop and just literally crop that where you feel that you want it. I'll probably crop that a little bit more. And probably a little bit more than that. So probably about ooh, do you see about there? Possibly. Maybe a bit more. And probably go to about there, maybe get that leaf on the corner of the image, giving it so from here going up and down again. So giving it that. So that looks good. So with all that detail, you might think cropping it that much, you're gonna lose a lot of detail. Well, but actually you're not, because you've got so many pixels in all of those images. And we're already started off with 32 megapixels on a crop sensor. So now what we've got is this image. Okay, and if we just zoom in, you can see how absolutely amazing that image is. And that's zoomed right in. So that is your full image, that is your full picture. Oh god, a bit clunky this. So that is your full image, okay? So that's it. So what we do now, now we've flattened the image, we've the layers are flattened. We then click on the red button there. It'll ask us if we want to save, and we say yes, we do want to save. And then we go. That will then go and process and go back into Lightroom. So that will go back into um, into Lightroom as a TIFF. And there we have it. So that is the finished article. Okay. Come back from from Photoshop into Lightroom. Now we can play with it. And now we can play with it easily, and we can have add a little bit of contrast. Um, this is this is basically just me. This is what I do. So this is what I'll do with my image. So uh, probably add a little bit, tiny bit of clarity, not much, because there's so much information in that, and it's so sharp. And it's beautifully sharp. Zoom right in there. You can see how sharp that is. One to one. That's all you want to do anyway, because one to one is more than ample. Give it a bit of vibrance, uh, probably about 20% vibrance. Uh, touch of blacks, because the blacks look really nice actually in this image. So we don't want to go too far on this side. Now, there's a lot of white in that, so we're going to bring that down a touch to there, and bring that down a touch to that side on that one. Come on. Cool. No. Okay. I'll leave that where it is. I think. Okay. So I think that that is rather nice where it is. So I could crop in a little bit more, but you know what? You can clearly see that's very, very sharp. And if we go two times in, then you can even see its claws. See the little claws there? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, that would print beautifully as it is. And we could even add a touch of detail and sharpening to that. But we don't want to go too mad. So about 20, 25%, maybe a touch of masking. If you click Alt or Options and then click left click, you can drag this masking tool up and you can selective sharpen, which we are here and we've gone up to 88% on that. And the idea is anything in white is sharpened, anything in black is not sharpened, which is a good thing in this respect because we don't want to introduce noise into this buttery background. And this buttery background want to keep buttery. So that is nice and sharp on where you want it sharp and nice and buttery where you don't want it sharp. All right, so that is it, but guys. Thank you very much for watching. You've watched IR Photo Tours in Robinson doing a tutorial on photo stacking. Lovely old job. 